Hi, welcome back. What I want to do in this video is take a, an, an in-detail look at complex 3 in the respiratory chain. And this complex has a name and it's, it is, and let me go ahead and write it here. It is, oops, it is cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase. And the mechanism of this enzyme involves something called a Q cycle. And the Q is just standing for ubiquinol or ubiquinone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best to draw it with a picture because it really helps to see it with a picture. Okay, so I'm going to give myself some room here. And you're going to find that there's actually two steps in this. So let me first draw this. I'm going to draw this box. Okay, here's that. Okay, let me draw this like this. Like that. And then see, let me do this over here like this. I have to scroll up a little bit. And then let me do this in red. Okay. And let me just draw several things in here. This will take just a minute. Right here, I'm going to have something called, and actually let me, let me make it a little bigger. Make it a little bigger so I can write in it. So I'm going to abbreviate this, but this is essentially heme B. It's not hemoglobin. That's heme B, low potential, L for low potential. And this is going to be heme B, high potential, right? Okay. And this up here, let me go ahead and write this. Let me do it in a yellow color. Actually, let me just do it in orange. This right here is a two iron, two sulfur center. This right here, this right here is going to be, this right here is going to be cytochrome cytochrome C1 and in here do it in purple we're going to have a oops I have to make that bigger we're going to have a heme C1 okay and then we're essentially going to have one more thing, and it's this, cytochrome C. Okay. So, what have I just drawn here? Well, I've basically drawn the setup, and actually, let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to do this, copy, paste. And you're going to see why I do this in just a minute. But we're going to have to essentially do this twice. Okay, so now I'll go back to my pen. Okay. So I think what's going, to, what's going to help you understand what happens is what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, we're going to start with QH2, right? But essentially what I want to do is I want to think about it like there's two electrons right I want to think about it like it's two electrons okay so the two electrons the two electrons are going to come in right they're going to come in but the thing you have to understand is they're going to be split they're going to be split so one of the electrons is going to go into this iron sulfur center and the other is going to go into this heme B low potential. Okay, 
So what I've done, so just think about this. This is 1QH2, right? 1QH2. And in the process of doing this, right, in the process, I generate ubiquinone again, right? I generate another ubiquinone, okay? And actually, one thing I'll also mention, there's another ubiquinone right here. Okay. So I split the electrons, and, they, and, and each one goes a different direction, right? Let's look at the bottom one first. So the, the one electron goes to the heme B low potential, and then it's going to go to the heme B high potential, and then it's that one electron is going to go on to this ubiquinone. And normally ubiquinone, we think of it with when it gets reduced, it gets to ubiquinol. But it's going to generate because it's only one electron. Remember, two electrons makes ubiquinol. One electron makes something called a semiquinone radical. A semiquinone radical, and it's, it, it turns out that it can actually accept one more electron, and it's going to do that in the second Q cycle. Okay, now let's look at the top electron. It went to the two iron, two sulfur center, and then what it's going to do is it's going to go to this heme C1, right? It's going to go to that heme C1. And then from there, the electron is going to go to cytochrome C. And the cytochrome C can accept one electron at a time. And so the cytochrome C, the cytochrome C is now, you could think of it as reduced. It's going to go and donate its electrons to complex four, generating an oxidized cytochrome C that goes and returns back here. So essentially the process that oxidizes cytochrome C is complex four, and that's called cytochrome C oxidase. So let's just regroup right now and see what we've seen. The two electrons from ubiquinol come in and get split to different directions. The bottom one goes to a heme B low potential, and then it goes to a heme B high potential, and then one of that one electron goes to ubiquinone to make a semiquinone radical. And right here is the semiquinone radical. The other electron goes to an iron, a two iron, two sulfur center then to a heme C1, and then to cytochrome C. And remember that the cytochrome C can only accept one electron at a time. And so then it's going to go to, to complex four and get reoxidized, and then it's going to return back to the, that point where it is now. Okay. And actually one important thing I do want to mention is that, remember, we do regenerate a ubiquinone. Okay. Now, Let's look at this again. But recall, one thing has changed, right? One thing has changed. And actually, let me, let me go ahead and delete that. Fill. OK. Get back to my brush. OK. Remember that now we have a semiquinone radical there, right? We have a semiquinone radical, OK? Well, now let's repeat the process over again. Let's put two electrons in, right? And just keep in mind, remember, that's another ubiquinol. And remember, the ubiquinol is coming from those three enzymes, NADH dehydrogenase, succinate dehydrogenase, and electron transferring flavoprotein oxidoreductase. And the same thing is going to happen again. The electrons are going to be split, and they're going to go opposite directions. So one of the electrons is going to go to the heme B low potential which is going to go to the heme B high potential, and ultimately it's going to end up on the semiquinone radical, and at the same time, that guy is going to pick up two protons, and it's going to generate, it's going to generate ubiquinol. So what have we seen? Well, this enzyme actually regenerates its own substrate. Well, that's a good thing, right? So as long as there are ubiquinols coming into this enzyme, this enzyme is going to regenerate its own ubiquinol. So think about this, right? We'll just think about this right now before we go any further. I'm putting in two ubiquinols, right? But for every two that I put in, I regenerate one. So that's a pretty good deal, right? So not only are those other three enzymes ubiquinol synthases, but this is also a ubiquinol synthase, right? 
So for every two ubiquinals I put into complex three, I generate one ubiquinal. Okay. And again, one of the electrons goes to the two iron, two sulfur center, which goes to heme C1, which then goes to cytochrome C. And just like before, cytochrome C, and again, this is catalyzed by complex four, cytochrome C oxidase. This is going to get reduced to cy or oxidized to cytochrome, to, let me just, to cytochrome C oxidized, and this would be the reduced, right? And then it's going to just come back here. And remember, cytochrome C can only accept one electron at a time. So for every ubiquinol that comes in, cytochrome C does one shuttle, and it's shuttling its electron to complex four, right? And so then from here, right, this regenerates ubiquinone, okay? Now, one thing I want to mention about this, this process is this process is called a Q cycle. This is called a Q cycle, and, 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 and the Q cycle is, is basically just the mechanism of complex 3. And complex 3 is what? It was cytochrome C, ubiquinol, oxidoreductase. Now, cytochrome C is a, is a unique enzyme in this pathway because one thing I want to mention, and I haven't mentioned it yet, but all of these complexes... Um, and including ETFQ oxidoreductase, which isn't typically one of the complexes you name, but it's kind of like complex 2B or something. But anyways, all these complexes are membrane-bound enzymes. They exist in the, inner, in, the, in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Cytochrome C is the only molecule or the only protein that is a soluble enzyme. Cytochrome C does not exist in the membrane, and that's why it's able to shuttle between complex three and four because it, it goes into the sort of into the inner membrane space and it travels from complex three to four and then donates its electron. Now, one thing I also want to mention, and we'll do a video on this later, much later, but cytochrome C also plays a role in apoptosis. It turns out that cytochrome C is actually act, able to activate an enzyme. And it, it, it's an enzyme called a, oops, it's an enzyme called a caspase. It's an enzyme called a caspase. And along with an enzyme called, or a, a protein called APAP1, cytochrome C in this, oops. Come on, work with me. Cytochrome C and this whole and actually, I'm sort of blanking on which cast space this is right now. I want to say... Actually, I'm not going to say... You can look it up on Wikipedia. I'm, I'm blanking on which one. It's either 8 or 9. I forget which one it is. But this whole complex is called the apoptosome. And it constitutes what they call the mitochondrial pathway of apoptosis. So cytochrome C actually can induce apoptosis. So... Not only is it producing energy, but it plays a role in program cell death. Uh, I just thought that was worth mentioning. But besides that, um, this is the Q cycle, and it is the mechanism of this enzyme. And so ultimately, this enzyme does two things. Number one, it reduces cytochrome C, but also it regenerates a ubiquinol. So remember, for every two ubiquinols I put into this enzyme, it regenerates one. And that's just the mechanism of the enzyme. And remember, the cytochrome C that's reduced with one electron is going to go into cytochrome C oxidase. And in the next video, we'll look at that. See you in the next video.